if you trust God, you don't see it, but God sees it. So let him be your guide. The gift of a true believer is death. But if I do die, it doesn't matter because God is on my side and I have true faith in God. And if God says that I have to die, then I trust the plan of God. Han Meditations. All right, guys, we're going to react to the story of Adam through the prophet series. Now, I've been getting, giving everybody credit who's been saying it. So this actually, I saw a lot of people saying this one. Yeah. Um, I've been seeing the Future Fun Club suggested it. Many people mm, have. So see. I know someone else did. Um, Yassine Labid. 6358. So yeah, a lot of people said it. Another one from uh, Aber to Tempest. So yep, I'm looking right here. What should we react in the community tab? You guys can find it and tell us what to react to. We're going to be looking at that. So maybe we'll make a fresh one too so people can get a chance to uh, really respond and get upvotes and all that. Yes. So, And uh, happy Ramadan, guys. We've been practicing uh, fasting for Ramadan with you. So we are incredibly hungry right now, I'm not going <laughs> to lie, but we're just going to keep praying, keep meditating. And a few more hours to go. Yep. And if you are new here, just so you know, if you see us taking notes or on our phones, we are not texting. We are taking notes because we are learning. Exactly. So she, Kelly likes to do it on her notebook. I like to do it on my phone. So yep. just two differences. So. All right, guys, I'm excited for this because we've been um, we've been learning so much. And if you want to know why we've been fasting and all that, you could see on our last podcast episode and how we got a message from God and we saw the crescent moon and all that. Mm -hmm. So we're just excited to learn more about Islam and really get into it. So. Allah said, فَخْرُجْ مِنْهَا فَإِنَّكَ رجيم. He said to Iblis, you are now an outcast. Then Allah now turns to Adam السلام, and he says to him to live in a place which he called Jannah. Adam السلام, was in paradise alone at first. And it says that استوحش, meaning he felt lonely. And he didn't know what this loneliness was from. So one day, Adam السلام, found, it says that he was napping. He found before him his wife Hawa, a woman. And his loneliness immediately faded, it went away. And he asked her, Man anti, who are you? She said, Allah created me so that you can find your peace and tranquility with me. He said to Adam السلام, and Hawa about Jannah. He said, وَكُلَا مِنْهَا حَيْثُ شِئْتُمَا Eat from this paradise anything you desire. Anything at all you desire, take it from Jannah. But there was one condition as we all know. Allah had said, stay inside Jannah. You've got all of these things to enjoy. But this one tree you don't eat from this one tree, the forbidden tree in Jannah. Shaitan came and he tricked them. He tricked them by saying, Wallahi. And he said, Wallahi, by Allah, I swear this is true. He started to glamorize what beautiful things could happen to them if they ate from that tree. Allah did not say don't eat from it. He didn't say don't touch it. He didn't say don't sit un under it. He said, وَلَا تَقْرَبَا Don't even come near it. فَتَكُونَ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ You will both become among the ones who have oppressed. You will do injustice to yourselves. And so Iblis made Adam السلام, and Hawa think of the tree. Think of the tree. Think of the tree. So he said, O oh Adam, O oh Eve, Allah hasn't told you to stop eating from this tree except there's a secret behind this tree. You eat from this tree, you will become like the angels. 
You are mortals. You will die one day. If you want to have an everlasting life, then you eat from this tree. إِلَّا أَن تَكُونَ مَلَكَيْنَ أَوْ تَكُونَ مِنَ الْخَالِدِينَ he said, you will be everlasting or you will become like the angels. Your mortal bodies will change to angel bodies. And to sum it all up, to put the icing on the cake, he said, Wallahi! He said, think about it. God did not forbid you from that tree except that it's going to turn you into angels. Then he told them, God did not forbid you from the tree except that you will live eternally. He started making up all these different possibilities. Adam alayhi salam being a prophet, Adam alayhi salam never heard anyone lie ever in his life, ever, ever heard anyone lie, and he fell for it. And so did Hawa alayhi salam, she fell for it. And they ate from the tree, and when they ate, بَدَتَ لَهُمَا سَوَآتُهُمَا Their clothes disappeared and it was very embarrassing for them. What happened at that moment when they ate from the tree? There was actually a concealing there was a part of their body, which was their aura. It was concealed with light, with nur. They weren't naked, running around. When they took from the tree, that nur went away. And so they were naked. Suddenly, the shame came to them. From what? From less covering, less concealment. This is because every sin, my dear brothers and sisters, leads to immorality. It leads us to desensitization. And straight away they took They took the, the large leaves of paradise and they started to cover themselves. And Allah said what? Did I not tell you, O Adam? Did I not tell you, O Eve? That I warned you from eating from this tree. Why? That the shaitan, the devil, he is your open enemy. He did not tell you this. They fell into embarrassment. What could they say? They said, Rabbana ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Oh our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. And if you don't have mercy on us, if you don't forgive us, then we will be of the losers. They realized their mistake, but it was too late. And now they have to bear what will happen to them. So they got sent down to the earth. So our father and mother, Adam and Hawa, were finally expelled from the Garden of Eden, as Allah explains in the Quran. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He warned us. He warned us from the shaitan. And he said, beware of him. He is your enemy. Look at what he did to your father and mother. He took them out of Jannah when they were once in there. Do not let him take you out of it. In other words, don't let him stop you from entering it. Adam and Hawa, that were sent down to earth. Allah says, Allah said to them, descend from it. And they were sent down to this earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to them, I shall be with you, I will guide you, if you need me I'll be there. In one narration, it says that Adam alayhi salam landed in India. Adam alayhi salam, he came down to earth and landed in India. And Hawa in Asham or near Mecca in that area. Allah knows best, there's differences of opinions, but what we do understand is that they came down in separate places. And so they began the search for one another. This search, my dear brothers and sisters, is inherited today when people are searching for their spouses. Adam alayhi salam and Hawa searched for each other. They became acquainted they found each other on the mountain of Arafat. That's the name of the mountain, the mountain of acquaintance. And there, my dear brothers and sisters, they renewed their life here on earth. There's a difference of opinion about how long Adam and Hawa stayed in paradise. We don't know exactly. But the majority of scholars agree that it was more than 40 years, at least. 
And he lived on earth for about a thousand years. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Adam alayhi salam and Hawa children. The first child to be born for Adam alayhi salam was a boy by the name of Qabil. He was born first and straight after him in the same stomach was a sister. So they were twins. Qabil's twin sister was beautiful. Whereas Qabil was not very handsome. After him came Habil. And he also had a twin sister. But Habil was a little bit more handsome. And his twin sister wasn't as attractive. It was only in those times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed brothers and sisters to marry from each other. But not their twin. And it's narrated in many hadiths that Hawa carried many stomachs. More than a hundred stomachs, 200 stomachs, and each one of them was a twin. So she always carried twins, a boy and a girl, every time. So Qabil and Habil were the first two, and they had twin sisters. You weren't allowed to marry your twin sister. So they'd marry from the twin sisters of others. Adam alayhi salam decreed that Habil would marry the sister of Qabil, and Qabil would marry the, the twin sister of Habil. Qabil had a sickness in his nafs. That was his test. His test was jealousy. Being the older brother, being the one who wanted the, the nicer sister. He wanted his own twin sister because she was prettier. Habil didn't mind. But this was the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He can't marry his own twin sister. This is haram. So Qabil got very jealous. Habil tried to advise him. And Habil was stronger actually. It was said that he is stronger physically. He tried to advise him. My brother, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. for This is his decree. Now Adam alayhi salam knew about this. So he brought them together and he said to them, Okay. He said to him, why don't you both go and offer an offering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and see which one will be accepted. Habil, he was a shepherd. He had sheep. And Qabil was a farmer, he grew wheat and crops. Habil went and got his finest, fattest, best sheep. And he gave it as an offering. Qabil went and got his, his worst bits of wheat that he had. And so Allah accepted the fine one and rejected the ugly one. Allah mentions this in the Quran and recites upon them the true story of the two sons of Adam when they offered a sacrifice and it was accepted from one of them and not accepted from the other. The latter said, the other person whose offering was not accepted said, I will kill you to his brother. Allahu Akbar. Oh brother, if you stretch out your hand against me to kill me, I shall not stretch out my hand to kill you. For I fear Allah. The Lord of the worlds. Habil was actually stronger than Qabil and he could. And he could have killed his brother if he wanted to. But Habil's piety to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stopped him. It's his piety. It's something that he had developed inside of him that stopped him from this terrible act. And then he says, Inni He tells you the reason why he did not extend his arm out to kill his brother. Why? He said, I fear Allah, the Lord of all mankind. Allah says, His soul then prompted him to kill his brother, and he killed him and became one of the losers. Now, when he killed his brother, Allah tells us in the Quran that Qabil didn't know what to do with his body. So, Allah sent a raven or a crow scratching into the earth to show him how to bury the corpse of his brother. Allah sent two crows because it says that. He carried his brother around and started walking everywhere and didn't know what to do with the corpse of his brother. First death, they didn't know how to bury. So Allah sent two crows and they fought each other in front of Qabil. One killed the other and then it went and made a hole in the ground and buried it with soil. After he buried his brother and it was over, 
Qabil felt regret. He regretted, but he did not repent. The regret came back to him. But guess what? He did not do anything about it. He did not repent. He did not make tawbah. He did not ask Allah for forgiveness. He didn't try to compensate his actions. The story then after that is very interesting. What happened? Qabil did not go back to his father. And the news came to Hawa first, to their mother. Some narrations say that Iblis himself came to Hawa. And he said to Hawa, Qabil killed Habib. And she said, killed? What does kill mean? In another narration, Qabil didn't know how to kill him. So the Iblis came and showed him how to kill him. He was trying to strangle him and try to put, pull him, but he didn't know how to kill him. So he told him, grab a huge rock and throw it on his head. So he, they learned how to kill and Hawa didn't know what death was. So he said to she said, what do you mean? What's killing? What's, what's death? He said, Iblis told her, it means that he can no longer eat or talk or walk. Or drink. Then she started to cry. Adam السلام, approached Hawa and he asked her what's wrong in this narration and she wouldn't answer. She kept on crying. He asked her a second time. She wouldn't answer. She kept on crying and he asked her a third time. She kept on crying and she wouldn't answer. So Adam السلام, kept silent. Qabil ran to the mountains it is said. Now he had gone and thereafter what happened? Adam alayhi salatu wassalam and his wife Hawa alayhi salam, they had many children. And Adam alayhi salam used to constantly remind them and he used to tell them. He used to call them regularly and tell them that this is what you need to do and that is what you need to do and so on. And this is how Shaytan, they used to gather together and he used to remind them how Shaytan led him astray and how Shaytan was very jealous and so on. So there is something for us to learn from this as well. We need to gather our children and we need to constantly remind them not only of our beginnings, but of the messenger of the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of something very interesting again, where Adam alayhi salatu was salam got sick. He got ill. He got ill at a certain stage. And look at Allah's plan. Allah made him wish for something. Wish for what? Certain fruits he had eaten in Jannah. He ate some fruits in paradise. He still remembered the taste. So he was wishing for it, making dua to Allah, saying, Ya Allah, I'm wishing for these fruits. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed him that at a certain place, you will find something. Not that you will find the fruits, but at a certain place, you will find something. But he was unhealthy. He was not healthy enough to go there. So he decided to send some of his children. He says, go to that place and you will find something for me there. So when they went there, they found some angels, a group of angels. These angels told the children of Adam, we are angels and we want you to go back to your father. He is ill and his time is up. Allahu Akbar. So they walked with Adam, with the children of Adam alayhi salam, back to Adam alayhi salam. And as they entered, as they entered, Hawa, may peace be upon her. She recognized this angel is the angel of death. The angel of death. So she quickly started going behind Adam alayhi salatu wasalam and he says, no, 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 don't worry, move away. I was created before you. He was not worried. Now why am I going and so on? He gathered his children on his deathbed and he reminded them saying, Allah will send messengers to you. He will not leave you alone. He will send messengers to you and messages. These messengers will come different languages, different names, different dialects, but their message will all be one calling you to worship one Allah, the one who made you and to stay away from the devil and to be careful that the biggest crime anyone can commit is to associate a partner with the creator. And after he reminded his children, the angels took his soul away and he passed away. And he passed away happily. He was happy to go. Why was he happy to go? Very interesting. I think that's a lesson. When I was reading about it, really it brought tears to my eyes. He was happy to go because he knew he is going back to that heaven that he came from. 
He knew he's going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was happy to go because he had problems here on the earth. He had tests. He had difficulties. He first hunted for his wife. Then he had the problems with his children and so on. And now he had to taste death. But that death was getting him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from this, there is a narration. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us through the lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tuhfatul mu'minil mawtu. The gift of a true believer is death. Why? You're going back to your maker, your creator. There's no more inflation. There's no more robberies. There's no more power cuts. There's no more, you know, credit and debt and people following you and running behind you and sickness and cough and what have you. Everything ends. It stops. There is only justice and goodness. And for you is what you wish and what you want and what you, whatever you desire. Wow, that was good. Now yeah. that that is different from the origin story that we grew up hearing as Christians. Basically, the story of Kabil and uh, and Habel is the story of Cain and Abel. Yeah. So I'm sure you knew that as well. So it's just a little different. different. I didn't know that they were fighting over the wife and the sisters and all that. But whenever you're telling a story like this and you're extrapolating it down, it really does make sense when you get down to the nitty gritty and you talk about. It. Because in the Bible, I don't think they even talk about how the kids were able to have kids and all that. But in I here, it talks about either. they were born, they had a bunch of kids. They're all born in sets of twins. Mm -hmm. So you just couldn't marry your twin because they had the closest genetic, genetic makeup to you. Right. So that actually does make sense in that way. I don't think it necessarily happened in that way but i think it's a it's symbolism mm -hmm. for how it actually happened but god said don't eat from the tree and then shaitan was saying no eat from the tree you'll become like angels at this point adam had never even heard of anyone tell a lie right i mean really think about that he had never even heard someone tell a lie so shaitan is telling him Oh, do this, eat from the tree, it's fine. And he's, you know, swearing by it and telling him you'll become like the angels. Your body will be immortal when he already was close like the angels up in heaven. Mm -hmm. And then whenever he took part in the most interesting part of it was they talked about as soon as he took that bite from the apple. And in the Christian version, Eve made him Eve take the bite from got the apple. tricked and told him. Yeah, and this, it was just like he took the bite. He did it. And I like that because as a man, you shouldn't be blaming anything on a woman saying it's her fault. It's, her, it's your fault. You're the man. You're the leader. You're supposed to be guiding your wife and your family. And you came first. Exactly. So he was, uh, they're saying that there was light over the body concealing it. That was the most interesting part to me because when we do meditations, when we do all, you know, anything spiritual or whatever, we always envision light around us, like the light of God surrounding us and protecting us and having yeah. that light, that white light protecting you. So whenever it's almost like a high vibrational white light, positive energy that was surrounded by him. And then whenever he ate the fruit, it was gone, disappeared. And then once that disappeared, that's when the negativity came in, the self-consciousness, the judgment, the looking at your own body, the anger, the hatred, the frustration, all of the negativity of earth and earthly things in the low vibratory energy and physical came in and they realized that they are naked. They realized that, oh, this is what it's like to have negative vibrations and negative feelings mm -hmm. because that light protection was gone. Yeah. And then they searched for each other's and ended up reuniting on the mountain of. Did you write that down? The mountain of Arafat. What does that mean, though? The mountain of acquaintance. The mountain of acquaintance. So and I like how they equated that. The amount of how they equated the mountain of acquaintance to whenever you're looking for your soulmate essentially in life, like how I look for Kelly. And the <laughs> first time I saw her, I knew there was something different. 100% knew there was something different. Never seen anyone like her before. It was a completely different experience that I've had with anyone I've ever met in my life. It was very strange. So it was like I was searching for this woman. I found her and I was like, wow, that's that's different. And, and we were um, young. Yeah, we were very young too. So, and then uh, 
that's when they get into this. She kept having, I think, over 200 kids or something, twins the whole time. Mm -hmm. And then another interesting part was, you know, the, the whole Cain and Abel, Kabil and Habil story. And then he kills them. And then when Adam died, he said, messengers and messages will be sent to you, all different languages, all different types of people. Right. And uh, that's what I truly believe because we're all getting messages from God. If you're really attuned to God, if you have a high vibratory energy around you, you're really getting messages from God sent to you, like how Kelly was, how I do. And we're being truly led by God. And you have to allow yourself to be led by God in that sense to truly be able to evolve and change and really be one of those types of people. And it's crazy because we talked about this in the podcast. If you haven't seen it, check out our last podcast. It was really good. We we're talking about all this kind of information and fasting uh, for mm -hmm. Ramadan and all that. But the gift of a true believer is death. So really think about that because I was saying that whenever I was going through my uh, health issues and health care for a few years, I was really thinking it got to the point where I trusted God so much that I did not care if I died because I knew I would be reunited with God. Now, I didn't want to leave my family. I didn't want to leave Kelly. I didn't want to leave this earth because there's so much for me to still do. But I had that comfort in knowing that if I do die, it doesn't matter because God is on my side and I have true faith in God. God. And if God says that I have to die, then I trust the plan of God. Mm -hmm. So overall, that was a brilliant and excellent story. Kelly, I'll let you talk and give you the floor to really say what's on your mind. That was cool. So the first thing I noticed is that shaitan, <laughs> shaitan, sorry, I'm not saying it yeah. right. But obviously it sounds very similar Satan, to Satan. Yeah. So that was a cool phonetically to understand a bit about where the term Satan comes from. Mm -hmm. Found that interesting. So the fact that with the whole tree, you know, it's it's just different because they really in the Christian Bible had it so that Eve got tempted and then convinced Adam to come along with him. Yeah. But none of that was here. And as it said, it's it's so it's like it's such a perfect metaphor because we live here on this earth and there's going to be many things around us that look good. Oh, let's try that. Let's try that. They're tempting you. Tempting. But we know sometimes we don't even know why we shouldn't, but we know we can feel it that God doesn't want us to do that. Some things are more set in stone, quite clear. We know why this is bad, but sometimes we don't know why, but we just know God doesn't want us to do that. But these things are still all around us and existing, but it just comes down to that trust factor. If you trust God, you don't see it, but God sees it. So let him be your guide, essentially. Yeah. And you don't even realize all the things he's doing for you, such as that protection of the clothes or the light all of those things he was doing for you. And as soon as you slip in that, and that's exactly how, you know, the devil works. It'll start tricking your mind, tricking your mind, making you think this is the right thing. This is good. Essentially your ego believing that it knows better than God. Yeah. So that's what happened. And then, so I guess you could say when in Christianity, they believe in the original sin, right? which we personally don't believe in. We don't believe everyone's doomed to sin because of Adam and Eve, right? That doesn't make sense to us. But for that to be the beginning of the feelings of shame, the feelings of embarrassment, you know, mistakes, feeling like you're not worthy enough. So it was interesting to hear it put that way because you know i don't remember exactly you know i'm sure i have read the actual text in the bible of adam and eve but i don't remember everything exactly but i don't remember explaining things quite like that so it was very interesting and i always wondered with the adam and eve story again maybe it does explain it in the bible i haven't read the whole bible but i always was left wondering you know even as i was young i was like okay adam and eve but they started the whole human race, but uh, once they had their kids, how did that work? You know, because they can only have kids from each other. 
So how did everyone keep repopulating? So this actually gives an explanation. Again, I don't know if the Bible explains it. I just don't remember ever being taught the explanation. I just always remember being left wondering how the kids populated. So this is a really clear cut explanation, which is nice to hear that. And then we get into the Kabil and Habil. And of course, Cain and Abel. And again, that story as well. I don't remember ever being taught really the reason, you know, I don't remember any women yeah, being basically involved. Just like jealousy. Yeah, and just jealousy. Sacrifice was exactly. there to you. Uh, and God rejected his sacrifice and all that. So. so that goes into it again, where, you know, it's how we exist here. We always think the grass may be greener on the other side, you know, oh, they that's the girl's prettier. I want to be with her. That house is bigger. I want to be in that house. Yada, yada, yada. They have yada, this yada. car. They have this exactly. job. They have this money. Oh, look Look at everything that they have. Mm-hmm. I just wish I could have that. But Why wasn't I born into that life? Yeah. You know, jealousy, basically. But again, God knows more than us. We have a specific way for a reason. Obviously, they didn't understand that you know, getting with the twins just biologically wouldn't result in a good offspring. They didn't understand that. Allah, God understands that. So it just goes back to that whole trusting. And it's just as soon as right off the bat, you know, we live here and we have all these temptations, the devil, the negative energy, the negative thoughts clouding us. And it's a difficult place to live as a being. It is. If you say so. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I think it's more difficult compared I think it's to easy. the angels. I think it's easy. All you got to do is trust God. It's that simple. Yeah. What's hard about it, guys? Just trust God. It is true. It's fine. But as we see with all these examples, with just the first few that people on earth. Of mi- or with millions, however long ago. But it's a story for a reason because yeah. people face this every day of their lives. No, absolutely. And I, I believe that's what it was even saying that. You can rise up and yeah. get over this. You don't have to make the same mistakes. That's what people don't right. realize. You don't have to be born into sin and all this. And you can go back to having that high vibratory plane and that light shield over you and just go back to God. Yeah. That's what everyone needs to do. Just go back to God. And it seemed like even though Kabil killed the brother, It seemed like he just decided to go outcast himself. Like it it seemed like he could have came back. And if he acted right, everyone probably would have welcomed again. But he decided to go be that outcast, which can happen once these negative emotions of shame, embarrassment, you know, not feeling worthy enough, not feeling good. If we let those take over us, then we will feel like an outcast. But we're essentially doing it to ourselves. We always have the opportunity to go back to God and go back to the right thing. And then we're good again. But if we become consumed by these negative emotions yeah, and shame, and all that. Mm-hmm, then you will be an outcast. But it's all up to you. And then after the death of Adam, it was his son, Shaith, which took over the leadership of his father and he was the second prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Shaith was a gift and even the name Shaith means gift Shaith was a gift that was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Adam after the death of his son Habil when he lost Habil he was very upset so Allah Azza wa Jal replaced Habil with Shaith, not only a righteous man, but a prophet of Allah. And Adam named him Shaith as a gift. And Adam alayhi salam taught Shaith most of the knowledge that he had. Al Rasul Sallallahu said about Shaith, Allah sent down 104 scriptures. Of them were 50 that were sent down upon Shaith. Adam alayhi salam, prior to his death, he used to live with Sheath alayhi salam and with all these other children of his in the mountains. Kabil decided to go to the valleys and to go to the flat land somewhere further away. And Sheath started to order with justice. On the other hand, Kabil and his descendants were just spreading corruption and evilness. So you had the people living in the mountain, the people of the good and the people of evilness living on the flat surface of the land. And life started to increase. 
Adam alayhi salam had forbidden that the people of the mountains mix with the people of the land. Because of that rule, there had never been that mixing. Adam alayhi salam died and she kept that rule. And they followed it, they did not mix and they were saved to a great degree. After some time, a problem arose. If we recall, Shaytan, when he refused to prostrate to Adam, alayhi salatu wassalam, he made a promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, I promise you, I will show you, I'll lead them astray. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, go and try and befool them gradually as you wish. Go and use your sound. What is the sound of Shaytan? The Mufassireen, almost all of them have made mention of music and musical instruments. Allah says, go and try. You can use your sounds. You can use your cavalry. You can use your infantry and go and be a partner in their wealth. What was that meant to be? Look at the books of Tafsir. They all make mention of illegal income. And the next part of the verse says, go and be a part of their relationships as well. In their children, you can have a portion. And what the Mufassireen say is this means go and encourage them to do what you want in terms of illicit sexual behavior. Whoever follows you from amongst them, they are losers. They will be with you in hellfire. But my worshippers who worship me, who have turned to me, you will never be able to overpower them. So Shaytan from that time, he bore this in mind. He decided that I will go to those who are with Qabil and pretend like I've defected from Sheath. Now there was a distinct sign. You could see very clearly the men from Qabil's side were not very good looking. And the women were very good looking. When it comes to where Sheath alayhi salam and the rest of them were, the men were very good looking and the women were not that good looking. He made himself to a form of a young boy and he went to a blacksmith who used to work with metal. And he asked if he could be an apprentice for that blacksmith. And what he did was, he worked for him and he designed a flute. He slowly started making sounds that people had never heard before. Because there were no sounds that people had heard. That was the beginning of time. And everybody would come, what's that sound? And they would come around him and watch. And he started blowing into it. And it created a sound and they came and they were excited. Wow. And they got so engrossed in it. They slowly started forgetting the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet, on the other hand, Sheath alayhi salam kept on reminding his people. And he kept on telling his people what was right and what was wrong and so on. And on this hand, we find that shaitan is teaching them how to do evil. They literally set aside a day where he would create these sounds. Everybody would come around and everybody would listen to him. And everybody would literally party. Until there came a time when some of the youth from Sheath alayhi salatu was salam were visited by shaitan. He went to them and he created a doubt in their minds. He made them ask a question. He made them question the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is it that we are not allowed to mix with these relatives of ours? What is so bad about them? So when they started asking this question, it was answered for them that look, Qabil had engaged in a crime right at the beginning. He engaged in murder. And for this reason, they were all on one side and we are ordered not to mix with them. These youth were dissatisfied with the answer. Some of them decided, let's just have a peep at what's happening because we've heard that here things are going on. Let's go and see. So they came down from the mountains and they went. And from a distance they were watching. They did not intend to engage in evil. But when they saw everybody's partying, and what did they see? They saw very good looking females. And so they went closer. And when they went closer, they were seen. And they were good looking men. So the women began to start displaying their beauty. In order to attract these young men, they came in and they enjoyed themselves. They had music, they had women, they had so much. They were partying, they were enjoying and they went away. So as the men came back, they told the other youngsters, Hey, you don't know what you're missing out on. You see there, they've got different sounds and these sounds are amazing. These people came back with a bigger group. 
and the group was growing and every time that party happened there were people from this side who used to quietly go to that side and they used to engage in sin music was invented and what else was invented adultery this is when zina began slowly but surely with the introduction of this first flute and music which called for a celebration between men and women gathering and dancing and over time zina was carried out and they even were killing one another was something becoming very common keep in mind people did not commit shirk as yet shirk at this time had not been done but bit by bit bit by bit the shaitan was taking the human beings to the second level to the third level to the fourth level after adam alayhi salam sheath lived on for a few more decades and some of the uh, narrations and scholars agree that sheath alayhi salam from his progeny from his children came most of the prophets most of the prophets ended up with him and some say all of the prophets ended up in his lineage at his deathbed after him he entrusted it to his most noble son his name was Enos who carried out his mission after him then after him his son Kenan and then his son Muhallalal took the charge of the mission after him came a son named as Jared who took charge of his mission and here the next man that came after him the Quran mentions him his name is Idris alayhi salam so I want to see that one too because uh I know Enoch, yeah, the book of Enoch yeah. and all that. And he saw the, I believe that was Enoch that saw the chariot. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was Ezekiel, but that's very interesting. But um, yeah, so Sheath was the second prophet after Adam and Sheath means gift. Mm -hmm. So Sheath was ruling with justice and Kabil was ruling with basically evil and chaos and allowing Shaitan to lead them. And the men in the sheath group were very uh, attractive. And, the, and then the women in Kabyles were very attractive. And so it was like a, a opposite. And there was a real duality going on with mm -hmm. Kabil being on the lower end on the earth. They're lower vibrational. And then sheath and his following on the higher end of the mountains. They're all following the will of God and doing good. Yeah. So and then also with the opposite. So it was almost like it was you know, bound to happen because you have beautiful men and everybody knows how men are bound to the flesh and a lot of women are as well. But if a man sees an attractive woman, hmm, what's going on over there? Mm -hmm. So they went down there and seen it. So one thing I was thinking whenever I was watching it is um, you must have been with Kabil's group because you're very beautiful. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And I must have been with the sheath and the, the positive forms. Yeah. So, no, I'm, so. I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm, I'm only joking. So, yeah, I like the duality there where they're just complete opposites in a sense. And then they start going down. They start seeing what's this, what's this. They start really starting to party a little bit. They start getting crazy. They start killing each other. I'm like, whoa, what the heck is going on there? Yeah. And one thing that it really made me think about is how they talk about shaitan and the music and then the music industry is some of the most That's what I was devilish say. satanic mm -hmm. weird low vibrational talking about killing and murdering and i did this to this girl i did this to that girl she was doing this to me just the most degenerate disgusting stuff drugs. that is replaying drugs yeah. and do whatever Killing, you want. Yeah. Don't listen to God. Do whatever you want. Some of them are outright saying, talking about the devil in these songs. Or in the music videos, at least. Yeah. One say. of the videos that we did like over a year ago, it went super viral. We were talking On about. TikTok. Yeah. We we're talking about what's his name? Uh, Sam Smith. Yeah. We we're talking about Sam Smith and his devil song and talking about, you know, it's just weird, nasty stuff. So you really have to be careful about what you're putting in your brain and what you're programming in your mind, because this is going to program your mind and you're going to start thinking differently. So you have to be careful because Shaitan uses this music in a very negative way. Now, not all music is bad, but clearly they're using it 
in it a can be. demonic and gross way. Even look at what's going on with Diddy and P. Diddy right now, guys. You have the music industry, okay, which is clearly Shaitan. And this dude's doing this gross, disgusting stuff to every arm. I mean, this is gross. Yeah, at least in like the popular music of the United States, you know, modern Western culture, it's like Satan has his hands all over it. <laughs> Shaitan. <clears throat> Shaitan, sorry. And so this naturally led to partying which you know we can all imagine that we can all see that scene when there's partying going on what is always happening there's always music you imagine like clubbing and people going out to the clubs and the bars there's always this music on that's not a very good type of music and then there's these girls and they look so nice and pretty they're getting dolled up they're wearing short little dresses and everybody's usually drinking and getting loose and you can just imagine it's you never really think about the origin of that but that was really cool and another thing i thought about with the music is if you guys are at all familiar with frequency sounds mm -hmm. so pitches and all these things have a different frequency and it's scientifically backed that certain frequencies are very good and you can look at pictures and scans of you know your brain your cells and how they change by listening to the different frequencies and it is said that this modern music today is put always produced at a frequency that's not really good. And so it makes me think for him to make these notes, like maybe Shaitan was doing a bad frequency music and that's how it all began. So that made me think of that, which was pretty interesting. And it said that he kept bringing these people slowly to the first, down, down to the first level, down to the second level, down to the third level. And I know they were like kind of lower physically because... You know, the people of Sheath were up in the mountains, but it also makes me think of like the seven heavens that we just learned about. So maybe like there's seven lower, like seven hells in a way, or the seven realms of Shaitan. Mm. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't maybe. know about that, but it's a good thought, man. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, so. The story of Idris, alayhi salatu was salam, known as Enoch, may peace be upon him in the English language. He was a man who was tall, he was very good looking, he was very calm, he had a full grown beard and he spoke very very clearly. When he spoke he was calm, when he walked he lowered his gaze and looked on the ground and he was a very collected individual, calm and collected. And he used to ponder and reflect and he used to advise with so much goodness. Idris was born at the time of Adam. So Idris met Adam and Adam met Idris. How many generations between Adam and Idris? Six generations. So Idris is the sixth grandson of Adam. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Idris was a prophet. And he is the first man to ever write with the pen. So writing before Idris did not exist. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Idris how to write. And Idris alayhi salam is the one that taught people how to write. He came as a prophet to help stop and call people away from acts of corruption which they knew were corruption. Away from their desires, as we know, such as zina and the act of killing. And it is said also in our history books that Idris alayhi salam was the first to take up arms against another army to fight against injustice. When he saw the corruption spreading, especially among the people of Qabil, and that corruption is spreading even within the people of Idris, so Idris alayhi salam declared war against the corrupt people. And he prepared an army of horsemen and people walking, fighting against the people of Qabil and the corruption of the people of Qabil. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave victory to Idris alayhi salam and make mention in the book of the prophet Idris. Indeed, he was very truthful and he was a prophet. Indeed, we raised him a very, very high status. The Mufassirin, they make mention of the meaning of a high level. He was elevated to a very high level by Allah in that he was granted Nubuwa and he was praised by Allah. And he is mentioned in the Quran that is a high level. 
In fact, in another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ismail, Idris, and Dhal Kifl, may Allah's peace be upon them. All three of them were very patient. So this is another quality of Idris. He was very patient. And Allah says, and we have granted them from our mercy. They were all pious people. So these are the qualities of Idris alayhi salatu wasalam we know, and this is definitely a very high status. However, Abdullah ibn Abbas once asked Ubay ibn Ka'ab radiallahu ta'ala anhuma about this verse. He asked him, what's this about Idris? So Ubay ibn Ka'ab said, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Idris one day, that Allah will give him the rewards of all the good deeds of mankind every single day. Over the good deeds of Idris, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also give him the rewards of all the people living at the time of Idris. So Idris thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. And he realized the only way to increase more rewards is to live for longer. And he knew that his death was approaching. So he had a friend from the angels and he spoke to this friend. He says, you know, Allah has promised me this reward and I'd like to amass a lot of reward before I go. So why don't we speak to the angel of death? Let's see what he has to say to say, look, just try and see if you can seek permission to prolong a little bit. So the angel says, look, that is a matter that is decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, there's no harm in trying. Come, you ride on my wing and let's go. So he rode on the wing and he was taken up to the heavens. He crossed the first heaven. He crossed the second heaven. He crossed the third heaven. When he got to the fourth heaven, Allah had instructed the angel of death to take the soul of Idris alayhi salam on the fourth heaven. They met the angel of death and the angel spoke to him about what Idris had spoken to him before. And the angel of death said, but where is Idris? He replied, he is upon my back. The angel of death said, how astonishing. I was sent and told to cease his soul in the fourth heaven. I kept thinking how I could cease it in the fourth heaven when he was on earth. Then he took his soul there out of his body. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa confirms in Sahih al-Bukhari in an authentic narration that when he went up for Mi'raj, he met Idris alayhi salam in the fourth heaven. And this is why some of the Mufassirin say when Allah says he raised him to a high level, he is speaking of literally Allah took him up physically to the top and then his soul was taken there. Idris alayhi salam died and time passed. There is a difference of opinion of how much time passed after Idris alayhi salam. Ibn Abbas Adon reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said there were 10 centuries or 10 generations between Adam alayhi salam and Nuh alayhi salam they all lived according to Islam during that entire time they were all on Islam meaning they did not commit shirk they did not commit shirk in any way shape or form one God there were no statues no idols no invoking prayers unto others no invoking duas unto others no offerings to others or along with Allah only Absolute Tawheed. But what was there? There was corruption in actions. There were sins. It became a big gap between Idris and the next prophet and messenger being sent. Few centuries. No prophet, no messenger. After the death of the prophet Idris, there was the followers of Idris, very righteous, very God-fearing, very obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People used to respect them. They were called, the first man was called Wad. After him was Suwa', then Yaghuth, then Ya'uq, then Nasr. These men were so loved by their people and they honored them. When they died, the people gathered at the funeral of Wad, the first one. Iblis and the Shayateen got an idea. They came to these people at the time of their grief. And they found an opportunity to give them a bad idea. What did they say? These noble men, this noble band, what? And the likes of his, they deserve to be acknowledged. We have to remember them. They said, what should we do? They said, build a statue that resembles him and build it 
at the place where he used to be and make it a moment of memorial just to, so that you can remember them. Every time you go there, you remember them. So what did they do? They did so, but they didn't worship it. So what happened after that? The next generations that came, the shayateen told them, your forefathers left these statues for a reason. They used to worship them to remember God through these noblemen. So what did they do? They started giving offerings and donations in the names of Wad, Suwa, Yaguth, Ya'uq and Nasr. They began in their prayers to supplicate to Allah by mentioning their names, giving offerings to them. And he said to them, have a statue of theirs in each one of your houses so that you can remember them. And that's how the shirk started to spread among the people after the death of Idris and the shirk took over the world that there was no one saying la ilaha illallah except Nuh. So basically that's how paganism started to spread yeah. through the shirk, which is the biggest sin in Islam, which is worshiping other than someone other than God. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> so Idris was the sixth grandson of Adam and he was a tall man, a beautiful man. He was a strong nice man. Beard. He was the first one to actually write with a pen, a full beard. And he was a warrior of God. So he was the first one to go out and fight injustice, declare war against the corruption and against the corrupt. So he was the first one to take arms against that. And whenever it was time for him to die, he went to the angel. Of, he went to one of his angel friends, said, hey, take me up to speak to the angel of death. Let's see if we can prolong this. So he went to the first heaven, the second, the third, the fourth. The whole time when I was thinking about this, I was like, was this like an extraterrestrial encounter? Because yeah. an alien could be or an extraterrestrial could be an angel. Who's okay. to say it can't? So like he could have taken him up on his wing on a ship or some, you know, yeah. kind of thing. And next yeah. thing you know, God stops him at the fourth heaven. And uh, or not God stops him. The, the angel, angel of death, death stops him and said, basically, Allah told him to take his soul on the fourth heaven. And he was kind of like, how would I even do that? Because, you know, he's on earth. But mm -hmm. Allah knows everything. So yeah. he already went down. He was probably like, oh, hmm, this is interesting. <laughs> so I <laughs> should just listen to Allah blindly, essentially. Mm -hmm. And um, and he did anyways. So he took his soul right then and there. Then the forefathers after that, these people believed in God. They were straight. To, um, they're doing good. They're doing the right thing. And then that's when people came and said, let's build these big monuments. And then. Once they died, no one worshipped them, but then Shaitan comes in, he starts sneaking the word and sneaking the yeah. word and corrupting the people, trying to corrupt them. Hey, that's what, let's worship these. This is what they did. They give them offerings. So, and that's what we'd always would tell, like our friend, we have a friend that's a pagan. We're like, why are you giving, um, why are you giving offerings to these creatures, these are not, these are human beings. Why are you doing this? You should not be doing, giving offerings of normal things. Yeah. This is something that should be for God and God only. You should be worshiping God only. And especially, I guess, apparently some of these beings can start to get mad if you, if you don't give them enough stuff or as often as they want. So automatically we're like, any being who can get mad about something like that, that's not a being I want to mess with, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? But we are going to be having her on and we can understand that side of things more as well, because I do think that's important to understand everyone's perspective. But we also are going to have her watch some Islam reaction videos and see what she thinks. Yeah, if you guys want us to introduce the pagan to Islam, let us know, because our whole goal on this channel is to spread the word of God. So we did it. We looked at videos on Hinduism. We looked at videos on spirituality, meditation. Now right. God has led us to Islam. That's what we want to spread as much as we can. So if you like these videos, show, uh, show some of the videos, like it, comment, because it can change people's life for generations to come. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. See you in the next one.